So at a time when I should be concentrating on moving house, uh, selling a house, buying a house, but not knowing a how, what house to buy until I sell the house first, I'm taking a little bit of time off to work on Bjaltana. Bjaltana is a talk the 1st of May. So I've been reading this book, Beltane, by Raven Grimassi. And it's quite interesting because it's looking at Bjaltana from a more Roman point of view, a Latin point of view, which is quite interesting because in Ireland we don't really have maypoles, but in England they're huge. Mm -hmm. That's because of Roman influence. The Romans didn't come to Ireland until the Roman Catholic Church came. But before that, we didn't have Romans influence, so we didn't have the maypole. And she goes through many different ideas and stuff like that. But one character she mentions is the hobby horse. And I immediately think, oh, the wicker man. And I then I think, oh, how fun it would be to make a hobby horse costume. I mean, for the summer coming up, there's going to be festivals, parades, all kinds of celebrations in towns. And a few of these would be just great fun. So I'm starting off with some hula hoops and for this kind of work you can never have enough hula hoops or bamboo sticks. They're, they're wonderful. So these hula hoops have a little clip that you can join them easily. So I've doubled up one. I have like one and a half of another roughly. And then I have a smaller one that I'm going to put in the middle. So I have a piece of bamboo now that I measured and cut and drilled three holes. And I'm going to attach it now to the hula hoops. You can use gaffer tape to attach it, but I just don't have any with me today. So I'll get the wire through. You can use string as well, but I find the wire just works that bit easier. Now, you might think that you would cut your four bamboos the same length and drill your holes in the same way, but I just find humanity comes into things and things might change. So now what I'm going to do is just measure another one, mark out where the holes are and drill that. So what I've learned over the years is when you think you have it secure, go again, just to make sure, give it a second. So what I've done now is, is I have the four ones connecting the three hula hoops and I've measured this one. Now I haven't drilled holes in this one, I just want to show you another technique with the old cable ties. Fair play to them. Because the last thing you want is something falling apart on your parade. So I have it ready now and it seems fairly sturdy, but what you have to do is, is give it a good practice run. So if I'm going to be a hobby horse, I'm going to be, you could be late for the parade. You could be turning around. But if a car crashed, the dogs are afraid of me. You could have anything. So you have to make sure that it is sturdy. You can't be precious about it. And then have a look and go back and secure anything that's loose. Excellent. Whew. Cup of tea now. So what I'm using for the head is something I've made before. It's uh, the body of a big bird. But basically what you do is draw your shape out of cardboard. And with PVA glue on, I glued on some polystyrene. Uh, cardboard on the other side as well. And I put some wire through the whole lot to make sure everything was secure. Now this is the, the simplest way to make a head. There's a few other things that I will get videos made for and they're quite exciting as well. But today I'm just gonna do this because I really want to get this done. So I've just kind of cut it and moved it and torn it around and we have the start of a horse's head. So what I'm gonna do with this is give it a, a coat of paper mache. So for the paper mache, I just put a little bit of wallpaper paste at the bottom and I am going to pour in some Boiling water. Cold water takes a long time to melt the flakes, whereas the hot water doesn't. So I have a nice soupy consistence consistency there. Paper. Now the big thing with newspaper and paper mache is it is much better to tear it than to cut it. Because when you tear it, you expose all these little fibers that soak in the wallpaper paste and glue better because when you cut they're just kind of sitting there as when you tear, they're kind of open to suggestion, I suppose would be the best way of putting it. You can see the wallpaper paste almost melts the newspaper. So I'm just going to go around all the edges. 
So I have this covered now in the wallpaper paste and the newspaper. Just one coat and the big trick is to leave that dry. Cover the, um, the top now in material. And my problem is I have too much material. I have yards and yards of really beautiful stuff that I keep saying, oh no, I can't use that. But I'll see what I have. So I decided to use some sheets that I used on a float before and the children had painted them with blue poster paint. So they should be okay. I wouldn't like to get them wet, but again, it's up to you what material you use. So I've basically cut out a circle and I have another sheet that I'm going to attach on. And the best way is to sew it on. I have a machine inside because sometimes it's, you spend more time trying to avoid sewing than actually doing it. If you just sat down, there seems to be kind of like a freak out if you mention sewing to people, but it's quite easy. Uh, another thing you can do, and I'll get the camera up close for that, if you have a group of people, and maybe younger people or older children, is to cut material into strips. So I'm going to do this one up close again. Half it, and bring your middle in, and bring your two ends like that. And you double it up, bring your middle bit, bring the two ends, and you can go right around then. So if you have a group of young people, they can go right around. What you can do then is with another color, I have two bits here, double it, and you get two strands from these two, two different, but you pull them together and you can just tie that one. And then the next two, so you could get another one in there then, and you're building up quite a nice weave, you see, when it stands up then. And that is quite nice if you have a group to get them involved in making their float. But I'm, so I've sewn on the outer layer. I'm going to make a slit across. I'm not going right to the edges. Pussycat, you're going to have to move now. Tie these on. I'm not going to do them really well because... I'm going to do a little bit more now. Just so I've got some more work done on the head now. I've cut out a piece of shape here to make more of the, the jaw. And I used, used some polystyrene as well to lift it up a little bit. I mean, you'll see it more from the side than the front. But from the front, I had a little polystyrene uh, ball that I sawed in half and put it on for the nose, for the nostrils. Now, for the eyes, again, I kind of want to use stuff that's lying around. There's no point in buying everything, you know. So I've just these two tuna tins here that the cats have very nicely cleaned out. There we go. Make a hole. There's another one. I have some wire. I'm actually going to make two holes in the fish cans. So I'm going to kind of thread that through. So once you decide where your horse's eye is going to be. Can you see that? I have a skewer here, a wooden skewer that's going to go right through and the wire should just follow it along. So you thread the wire through one hole and in through the other. Shot through the heart and you're to blame. You give love a bad name. <laughs> okay, so we just wire that back through you might need tape. This is flopping a little bit, but you got your, you got your eye. So you can see with this one, I've started paper mashing. I've used a bit of tissue paper here, but I'll talk about that for the last coat. So what I'm going to do now is give it another coat of paper mache. I'm going to leave the silver bits uh, of the eyes for the moment. I'm just going to paper mache the side of the can onto the, the head. <laughs> so we have our horse. Um, I've heard of the headless horseman, but this is an earless horse. So I forgot ears along the way, but I have made them now. They're a bit wet. I've given it a coat of paper mache, but then when that was dry, I gave it a coat of tissue paper just to tighten down everything. And the wallpaper paste melts the tissue. So you have to use PVA for that, but it does give it a nice, good kind of solid finish. And I'm nearly there. 
I have the head nearly ready. I have the cloth body nearly ready. I'm just going to put up this video, Hobby Horse 1, and then we'll have fun with the, the other Hobby Horse bit as well. I, I really do think it's interesting because this and these big street theatre groups are brilliant, but they kind of strangle the creativity of a small village or the spontaneity of a group. You know, it has to be the big whoop or it's nothing. But these kind of projects are great, so I'm going to do a lot more over the summer. So stay tuned for my Hobby Horse 2 when it's finished. Thank you.